Well, here we are again with um, the second part of this particular sow's ear. Now, I have done what I said I was going to do last time. I um, blew open the seams on the front and the outside and the inside apron. I robbed the two, um, one pleat from either side, <clears throat> which again takes, you know, we, we lose a finger width, but we gain a hand span. Um, I left the basting in because, again, I'm really impressed. I really like how, I mean, this person is working very quickly. They're working with a sewing machine. But I'm, nonetheless, I'm impressed because they have sewn in or, based, or pressed in the shape for the, for the swell of the hips, the butt. And I'm going to keep, I left the basting in so I don't lose that. And it's refreshing to learn stuff. It's always fun to learn stuff. So I'm going to see what else I can learn about that. So I've pressed them flat. My next stage is I've marked out the pleats because, or marked out the, I've chalked the size of the aprons because this person's new waist measurement is 38. Um, fortunately, the measurement at the center of the strap, you know, two and a half inches down, is across because we've, we've robbed those two pleats. It's just a bit over 18 inches, which makes my front apron 20 inches at the waist. It's a hair over, it's exactly 22 inches, so it makes it 21 at the hip. Now on the inside apron, I make the inside aprons, I've just started doing this a while ago. I've started making the inside aprons a little bit wider than the outside apron. And that is so when the strap is sewn in place, you don't get a, a gap between, let's say the buttonhole is here and the end of the apron is there. You get that gap and occasionally, you, uh, the person can get pinched. It's only happened a couple of times, but if it's happened a couple of times to me, I have to assume it's happened to somebody else. So in this case, the front apron is going to be 20 and 21. The inside apron is going to be 21 and 22. And that gives us that little bit of extra space that I just mentioned. So my next stage is I'm going to be sewing the inner apron to what is now the last pleat. And Again, by um, by taking away that, uh, robbing that pleat, I'm able to have a hidden pleat, an apron pleat. And it's not as deep as I would like, but it's sufficient. The the the, what, I, I should have taken a picture of what was there before because it was weird. I couldn't figure it out. And remember how the the inner apron was curiously baggy. So we're gonna we're gonna take care of that at the same time. So the next stage, as I said. I'm going to sew the inner apron to the first pleat, base down the apron pleat, make up the outside, the, the outside edge of the, of the inner pleat, or the inner apron, I should say. Um, and then I'm going to re-sew these pleats because there's the bottom of the pleat, the bottom of the fell, I should say. We have to extend it. You have to extend it down to, to there. So I'm going to be sewing all of these. These are machine sewn, so I probably probably won't have to sew the entire seam. But I think I probably will anyway, because I'm going to be sewing the usual eight stitches per inch, at least eight stitches per inch, up until that bottom of that fell there. And then I might just open up the stitches to, let's say, four or five stitches per inch because this is already a secure seam but on the other hand we do have to secure the seam at the top because over time you can see right there see the stitches aren't, aren't anchored so this, over time this would let go so see so yeah, i'm going to sew all of these seams i've opened up what is now what had been the second and third pleats now the first and second pleats i've opened this seam up for the buttonhole but as you can see there's not a lot of cloth there so what I'm going to do, because I shortened the kilt, what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully splice in a piece of cloth. And this, this is going to be hidden by the, by the apron as it folds over it. And it's, and it's going to be, I'm going to table the edge. I'm going to fold it over like that and sew it very neatly indeed so that we have that flap of cloth that we can fold back over the canvas in the usual fashion. So there, yeah, all that I've described. And then from there, I'll basically be carrying on as per usual, getting that canvas in, attaching the front apron canvas, shaping the front apron. I'll have to talk to the fellow because he lives down in the States. I'll have to talk to the fellow to see if it's at all possible for him 
to come up for a trial fitting before I finish this thing. If not, um, I'll just have to proceed and, uh, and hope that um, it comes to fruition. We still have time. His wedding's still several months away. So if he, because he has to come up for a, a fitting for the coat that we're making for him, the jacket, the waistcoat, and everything else. So, because he has to come up for that that trial fitting, that first fitting, for for his jacket, we can. I'll have the kilt ready for him then. If it doesn't, you know, if there's something more I have to do, I've still got time to do it. So there we go. Fun with. Uh, with um, kilts of, I was going to say moderate quality, but again, there's a couple of things about this that really impressed me. So there we go. Quality is where we find it. Thank you.